The central disc right here with gotcha marsh right here and human beings right here. What exactly is it that scientists fear? Actually, a whole lot of things. The likelihood of a meteor impact, nuclear war, climate change, and the day the sun expands are all quite near the top of the list. Researchers from all across the world add to the body of knowledge that humanity has amassed each year. Archaeologists and paleontologists find remnants of the past that indicate ecosystems and civilizations that have vanished over time. As biologists and earth scientists struggle to understand the inner workings of our own planet and the life it supports, astronomers try to solve the mysteries of other worlds. But what emerged from all of that exploration in Asia was shocking and unanticipated. Join us as we explore this discovery from Asia that scared all scientists. The Fire Mummies It is well known that ancient cultures practiced mummification of the dead, most notably the Egyptians with their elaborately bandaged and embalmed bodies. But now, a new kind of mummy, the Fire Mummy, has been revealed thanks to the finding of some meticulously preserved remains in the Philippines. The fascinating tribal culture that preserved these ancient remains has been better understood, and researchers have gained fresh insight into a hitherto unseen mummification process thanks to these artifacts. The isolated mountain ranges in the northern Philippines are home to the Kabayan indigenous people, who are also called the Ibaloi. They are hospitable, hard-working people who dwell in the shadow of the dead. Their territory is composed of terraced rice fields amidst rolling green hills. And everything else about them is ordinary. Above their farms on Mount Timbak rests the smoking remains of hundreds of their ancient ancestors, some of whom date back as far as 1,200 years. The local residents and the Filipino government have made great efforts to protect the priceless place, making the discovery of the fire mummies a challenging task. It takes five hours to get to Kabayan in the highlands and then another five hours to trek up a bewildering flight of stone steps to reach the old ruins. The caves that house the mummies, who are still in their original coffins and pristine condition, have access protected by sturdy fencing. When compared to mummies preserved using traditional methods like traditional bandages and embalming fluid, fire mummies have many distinguishing features. To begin, the dying person would have to drink a salty drink to help dehydrate themselves, which was the first step in the preservation procedure. The remainder of the intricate procedure could start after the person had passed away. It could take several weeks or months to finish. The body was ceremoniously cleansed and then positioned over a heat source in accordance with tradition. The Ibaloi were able to squeeze more people into their small caverns by folding their bodies in this way. The bodies were never actually burned. Rather, they were smoked over burning kindling to a temperature that rendered them leathery and dry, much like a piece of meat. After the outside of the corpse was completely smoked, the Ibaloi would begin to dehydrate it from the inside as well. An unconventional method was employed. The internal organs were dried by blowing tobacco smoke into the mouth of the cadaver. After the body was thoroughly dried with herbs, it was carefully deposited in a little wooden coffin within one of the secret tunnels. Like many other indigenous rituals, smoking mummification eventually died out when the Spanish, commanded by the illustrious explorer Ferdinand Magellan, invaded and occupied the Philippines in the early 16th century. Extensive mummification was seen as too primitive and indigenous, and processing the deceased took on a more European flavour. In spite of their apparent fragility and age, a few of the fire mummies from Kabayan were taken in 2000 and sold in Europe for exorbitant prices. The situation escalated to the point where the country's Department of Foreign Affairs had to intervene to guarantee the safe return of as many remains as could be found. It seems that stealing mummies was a common practice. Even though eight mummies were returned to their cave homes and full funeral rites were performed in 2004, many of them are still missing and no one knows where they are. The theft of the elaborately tattooed corpse of a prominent tribal chief named Apo Anu, 
who had passed away 500 years earlier from his coffin happened around 1919, and it was a significant disappearance. A Filipino pastor who had visited the location had taken the body and, as it turned out, it ended up in a manila circus as a sideshow. The mummy went through several more owners before an antique dealer gave it to the National Museum in 1984. After notifying the authorities without delay, the museum returned the corpse to its rightful location. Superstition has long been associated with these caves as it has with other old burial sites. The widespread looting of the sacred caverns has led many locals to think that the region is cursed with droughts, earthquakes and famines because of the disrespect shown to Apo Anu. The government has built a unique fence around this priceless figure's resting place and pledged to cover all the costs associated with keeping him there. The fact that the Kabayan fire mummies have remained mostly undisturbed from their initial resting place is another intriguing aspect of these ancient artefacts. No way King Tut can say that. The indigenous people and the government both see them as direct ancestors and hence continue to safeguard them. The Demon in an Ancient Tablet On the back of a 2,700-year-old clay tablet kept in Berlin's Vorderasiatisches Museum, there is an unseen demonic figure with curved horns, a forked tongue, a tail and a reptilian eye. Trolls Pank Abel an Assyriologist from the University of Copenhagen stumbled upon the uncommon picture five years ago while examining the cuneiform writing. The item has been recognised by researchers for decades, but he was the first to notice the creature's distorted shape. According to the wording on the tablet, the creator believed that convulsions and other involuntary movements, known as Bennu at the time, but now known as epilepsy, were caused by a demon. The humanoid figure is around 1 inch wide and 2.5 inches tall according to the study. Its body seems to be coated with scales or hair and it has a lengthy neck. The claw-like hands and feet of the demon are still partially visible, despite the fact that the majority of its torso has been covered throughout the ages. In ancient Assyria, magic and medicine were joined at the hip. An announcement from the University of Copenhagen claims that the Assyrians thought witchcraft, demons or gods were to blame for illnesses. Healers used medications, rituals or incantations to treat various ailments. Abel tells Metcalf that the recently described drawing is interesting since it is not like the spiritual imagery that is usually found on cuneiform tablets. The tablet shows an actual demon in contrast to comparable drawings, which generally depict a figurine made during a ritual to remove the illness. The work depicts the mystical creature as the healer who wrote the text must have imagined it, the researcher writes in the release. As the healer who penned the passage must have imagined it, the mystical entity is depicted in the artwork. Trolls Pank Abael Bennu's occurrence was attributed by ancient doctors to a demon functioning on behalf of the Mesopotamian moon god Sin, according to the text found on the tablet. Arbol stated that the typical treatment involved donning a leather amulet and inhaling smoke from specific components that had been scorched over hot coals. Arbol had already finished a different study with cuneiform tablets that listed a man named Kisa Asher's medical education. The Assyriologist told Science Nordic's Bo Christensen in 2018 that this microhistory provided fresh perspectives on ancient Assyrian medical procedures, such as how physicians were trained in the art of diagnosing and treating illnesses and their causes. Similar to the tablets examined in the last study, the demon manuscript was discovered in Kisir Asher's personal collection. Around 650 BC, he and his family resided in the city of Assur, which is now in northern Iraq. But, as noted by Live Science's Metcalf, the Bennu manuscript in question was probably a copy of a much older record. It's common to refer to Kizar Asher and similar people as exorcists, but Abel informed Christensen that this label is inaccurate because these people also dealt with secular problems. In addition to working with religious rites, he also provides medicinal care using plants. It's probable that he investigated how snake and scorpion venom affected people's bodies and attempted to make inferences from his findings. The mass 
baby grave. Archaeologist Ross Voss discovered a grisly artifact at the ancient harbour of Ashkelon, located along Israel's Mediterranean coast. He found a lot of little bones while delving into one of the city's sewers. The bones were initially thought to be chicken bones. But thereafter, research revealed that the bones were, in fact, Roman newborn human remains. It was the largest discovery of newborn remains to date, with over 100 babies worth of remains found. Voss brought the infant's corpses to forensic anthropologist Professor Patricia Smith because she was curious about how and why they had perished. After examining the baby's bones, Smith concluded that there were no indications of disease or illness and that the babies appeared to be in excellent health at the time of their deaths. Through the use of forensic testing, she was able to ascertain that none of the infants had survived more than a week prior to passing away. Infanticide as a method of fertility control was not unusual throughout the Roman era. Since newborns were considered to be not fully human, it was not illegal. A Roman woman who did not wish to have a child would typically use the technique known as exposure. She would leave the baby to die or be found and taken care of by someone else. The gods would decide whether or not to spare the infant according to the beliefs prevalent at the time. The most well-known narrative of near infanticide is found in the myth of Rome's founding, in which the twin sons of Mars, the god of war, were left in the woods to be reared by wolves. They would go on to be Rome's founding myth. The newborns in Ashkelon did not seem to have been exposed, according to the research. Rather, they were apparently murdered on purpose. Considering where the bodies were found can provide light on what caused their demise. According to the findings, the bones were discovered in a sewer that was located just beneath an old bathhouse. The babies might have been born to the bathhouse's prostitutes or workers. But since no other evidence has supported the notion, it is still only speculation. There is more evidence of mass murder of infants during the Roman era than only the one found in Ashkelon. The curator of England's Buckinghamshire County Museum, Alfred Hennage Cox, made a startling discovery in 1912. Cox discovered the bones of 103 people while directing an excavation at Hambledon, which was once a Roman villa. Out of the 103 people counted, 97 were newborns, 3 were kids, and 3 were grown-ups. This horrific discovery begs the question of who killed the babies and why. But Cox did not look into where the bones came from. After archaeologist and director of England's Chiltern Archaeology, Jill Ayers, found the bones in a museum archive, she chose to investigate the killings further. The Hambledon site, according to Ayers, is just another example of a brothel where the women who worked there would have undesired children and then be slaughtered. There was no evidence of poverty at the location, ruling out resource scarcity as a possible explanation for the massacre. Additionally, no diseases that were known to be prevalent in the region at the time could have caused such a high number of fatalities. According to Ayers, the site's history as a brothel is the sole plausible explanation. For those who preferred not to have children or take care of them, the lack of modern methods of birth control meant that infanticide may have seemed like their only alternative. Mass graves containing the bones of infants are deeply upsetting, regardless of the cause or manner of death. We hope to learn more about the circumstances surrounding the deaths of these babies in due course the ancient forest. After plunging 656 feet down a sinkhole, Chinese scientists apparently stepped into a fantastical world, discovering an old living forest that has been cut off from the rest of the world and is likely home to species that have yet to be identified. Speleologists and spelunkers arrived at the cave's three entrances, only to discover 130 one-foot-tall ancient trees below, their branches reaching for the scant sunshine that seeps through the cracks. The enormous chasm has a volume of more than 176 million cubic feet, is more than 630 feet deep, and is more than 1,000 feet long. It is also about 500 feet wide. The massive sinkhole, 
also known as Tiankeng or Heavenly Pit, is situated in the Leia County of the Guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region in South China. This brings the total number of huge sinkholes in the county to 30. To get to the bottom, the exploratory crew had to hike for many hours after rappelling more than 320 feet. They encountered trees rising more than 100 feet in height and vegetation reaching their shoulders. According to Venny, who works for a sister agency of the group that investigated the Chinese sinkhole, geologists would contend that the discovery is not surprising given the cast geography of southern China, live science's Stephanie Pappas reported. According to the National Park Service, cast is a type of landscape where the dissolving of the bedrock has created sinkholes, sinking streams, caves, springs and other characteristic features. Marble, gypsum and limestone are typical rock types found in cast settings. Cast is formed when atmospheric carbon dioxide is dissolved in rainwater, resulting in the formation of hydrochloric acid. The somewhat acidic water seeps into the earth via fissures and holes in the rock. Limestone, marble and dollar stone all include the mineral calcite, which is dissolved by water and causes the formation of sinkholes, caverns and streamways. Due to the rapid water flow through the porous limestone, karst regions are perfect for storing groundwater. Having said that, they are extremely susceptible to contamination. Karst aquifers are the principal water source for almost 700 million people across the globe. Karst can look very different at ground level depending on factors including local climate and geology. As a result, China is home to some breathtaking cast features, such as massive sinkholes and vast cave entrances. In some regions, you can stroll out onto the cast and hardly notice anything. Sinkholes can be really little, measuring in at just a few miles across. The property showcases the most remarkable and representative cast landforms and landscapes of southern China, spanning from the interior high plateau to the lowland plains. It is also the best example of humid tropical to subtropical cast on Earth, and UNESCO has recognised it as one of the world's great landscapes. So, are there any previously unknown forms of life down there? Time will tell. Bizarre alien-like skull the dusty bones of a woman with a strangely elongated skull have been exposed after the traditional ancient Korean coffin was split apart and found in a tomb dating back to the 6th century. Finding long-necked skulls from antiquity is actually rather common. But the scientists don't think this skull was stretched by some kind of culturally sanctioned artificial cranial deformity, unlike most similar discoveries. The artefacts were unearthed by a group of bioanthropologists in Gyeongju, which is located in what is now South Korea. A woman who had passed away in her late 30s was identified as the result of an analysis of her hip bone and teeth, which also provided information about her age. Additional research confirmed that she most likely resided in the Silla Kingdom in the 6th century CE. Given the widespread Buddhist influence in the Silla Kingdom, the carbon isotopes found in her bones suggest that she probably followed a vegetarian diet consisting primarily of wheat and rice. A mitochondrial DNA study on the woman's femur revealed that she belongs to a rare genetic lineage that is still present in modern-day East Asia. Something seemed strange, though, when they examined the woman's head. Using three-dimensional imaging, the team put her skull back together. In addition to providing a glimpse into the woman's appearance, the 3D models and physical reconstruction of the skull revealed that it was abnormally elongated, with a cranium that was noticeably shorter, flatter and longer than adults in modern Korea. What then might account for this extraterrestrial quality? For a variety of cultural and religious purposes, skull distortion has been practiced in various parts of the ancient globe, from ancient Australia to 19th century South America. Nonetheless, this Korean skull showed something different. Not only was the skull abnormally long, but it also lacked the flat bones typical of artificially extended heads, which is a hallmark of abnormal cranial shape. 
The study's co-author, Yun Jin Wu, noted that the skulls used in the research did not exhibit the kind of shape alterations seen in craniomas. Regarding this matter, they believe her head should be regarded as a typical group variation. Researchers think ancient Koreans from the Silla period may have had abnormally long heads compared to modern-day Koreans, but they can't say for sure if there were any magical aliens in the area. They acknowledge the need to study more people from this time period, but they are hopeful that this woman could shed light on the migration and daily life of ancient East Asians. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.